Okay. So, as we said earlier, Boris Johnson has attempted to hijack the EU story this week to advance his own career. Joining us now to look a bit more closely at what the fuck Boris thinks he's up to <laughs> is Conservative luminary, barrister and ex-MP Jerry Hayes. Hello, Jerry. Welcome Hello, to the show. Sam. Great to have you here. Now, a lot of people have suspected for a long time that Boris Johnson is a complete cunt. But you've come out this week and confirmed it for us, right? I never said he was a cunt. Right. Because a cunt is warm, wet and inviting. And I don't think Boris is. <laughs> <laughs> um, what you did call him was a copper-bottom, double-dealing, hypocritical little shit. That That's was my charm offensive, beautiful. Sam. I was just warming up. I was being nice to what I was really going to say. So tell us why he is all of those things and well, more. Weeks ago, week after week, he's been writing all sorts of wonderful things about the uh, EU. You know, we must stay in. I'm in favour of immigration. Blah de blah de blah de blah. And then suddenly he says, "Oh, I'm, I'm all against it now. Why is it? It's because he wants to be leader of the Conservative Party. Because you see, he damp gussets all the women in the Tory Party. They just love him. They." Yeah cream in their jeans at the at the, at the thought of Boris. Yeah. But of course, I think he rather turns an awful lot of people off. The biggest sin of Boris Johnson, as far as I'm concerned, and I knew him when I was an MP, I knew him when I was a journalist, he never buys a drink. <laughs> now, hey, yeah, how yeah. serious is that, mate? That's not how what serious saying. is that? No, you always buy your round. Uh, Boris sees himself as Churchillian. What do you think about that? Uh, well, Churchillian spent a lot of his time drunk. And I suppose, no, Boris, I'll be like, doesn't spend any time of his drunk because he never buys a drink. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But he, what do you make of this whole thing? Well, he's written a book, you see. Yeah. Every time, you see, like Gordon Brown wrote the book on courage and he wants to reflect in the other people's courage. Mm. He wants to talk about Churchill because everyone can say, oh, Boris is just like Churchill. Mm. He's not like bloody Churchill at all. What, it, what do you make of this sort of, but I'm just a bumbling fool kind He's of? Not it, a that, fool. that is an act, right? No. The whole bumbling thing is no, an act. It's, it, it is a complete and utter act. He is one of the most ruthless politicians you could ever, ever imagine. Read the Sonia Purnell book, very interesting. Burns, as a journalist, burn your sources. Mm. Nick other journalists' stories. That is pretty unforgivable. And he has always been a Europhile. He's always been in favour of it. So this is pure hypocrisy. This is all about leadership. And that's why I think the worst thing you can call anyone, I think, is a shit. I should make the point to our viewers at home that we did ask Boris to come on the show and defend himself against all these accusations. Uh, we didn't hear an answer from his office. We're taking that as carte blanche to just give him a good kick in. <laughs> Michael Goh's gone Brexit as well. He's a bit of a prick too, isn't he? Uh, I, like, uh, I like Michael. But like he's, he's on the other side to you. Yeah, he's on the other side to me, but he's been a very good Lord Chancellor because, you know, we're all going, bust, lawyers know you're going to weep in your beer over that. Mm. But we had our fees cut by 45%. Oh, and he's, Jesus he's, Christ. Yeah, I know. That's the smallest I, violin yeah, in the yeah, world, pal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But on the other hand, he's a good guy. I think he's hopelessly wrong. But did you hear about that dinner that they had in Chateau Boris Johnson? Right. Uh, you know, they were agonising of what they should do. And Boris wrote two articles for the Daily Telegraph, one one in favour and one against. Come on, this is not about principle. This is mm. so when you ambition. call him ruthless, you mean, he, he doesn't ruthless. Have, unlike Churchill, he doesn't have a single principle that he, 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 he appears prepared to stand by. Well, I don't know about a single principle. He's probably got one. Let's get myself elected. Look, mm. he's not the sort of guy you'd go tiger shooting with mm. because what would happen is he'd end up doing a deal with the tiger uh, and then he'd be shagging some girl on the bloody leopard uh, tiger rug afterwards. Mm. Sounds like a lot of fun, but not necessarily the guy you want in charge mm. of the nuclear. Arsenal, Whoa. right? Um, how are the how are the Stay Put gang gonna convince the public? Undecideds like myself, yeah. that, that, you know, we should vote with them. Like, we had Tim Bell, a guy who you're no doubt uh, familiar with on the show recently, <laughs> and I know you know, Tim and, well, and, yeah. he, and he said, you know, the, the the Stay Put crowd, they just haven't got any good stories to compel the public. One thing to remember: what did the Polish Prime Minister say? If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. I mean, they say, we can renegotiate all these deals. Canada are still renegotiating after seven years. Mm. Switzerland's still renegotiating after nine years. They would have no... We would have no say. We'd have to pay to get into the single market, but we'd have no say in the rules. Mm. So, there we go.